Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Isaiah. This is going to be chapter 43 of the Isaiah Commentary series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Okay, verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Now remember, Jacob's name it was changed to Israel. So let's take a look where the Lord says he formed thee. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, we read, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 5, the Lord said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That's funny. That's the same word that they translate sometimes as Gentiles. So, same word. All right, let's go to verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, Isaiah, that's Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now, in Isaiah 43, in verse 2, it says, When thou passest through the waters... Now, sometimes it's talking about water, you know, a lake or a sea or what have you. But that's not always the case. In Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15, when it's talking about the whore that sits on many waters, well, let's take a look. Revelation chapter 17. Now we're going to skip around a little bit. Verse 1. Revelation 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. All right, so verse 2, the whore, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Spiritual, right? Verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple. That's the color of royalty. Arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand 
having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Where do we read about a golden cup? Simple, Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Ah, Babylon, as Jeremiah 51, 7, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. And not angry, but crazy. Big difference. All right. So, back to verse 4. Um, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, that doesn't mean he liked her. It's just, you know, it's like a rattlesnake. Uh, I don't like rattlesnakes, but I respect them because I know what they can do. But that, that's, I think that's what they mean by admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Perdition means to fall, people. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Huh. So there's people whose names are, were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? Hmm, seems that way. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Now, from what I understand, there are seven continents. So maybe that's what they mean by the seven mountains. I'm not sure. All right, uh, verse 11. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and, of the seven, and goes into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom of ye, as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful so you want to be called chosen and faithful verse 15 remember we were talking about waters well gee Bob you're taking a long time to get there uh, okay, verse 15. Here's the punchline. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So the, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest 
upon the beast. These shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. All right, Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and when, and through the rivers they will not overthrow thee, overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Go to Daniel chapter 3. We're going to skip around a little bit. All right, now remember, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream about an image, a statue of a man with a head of gold. And Daniel interpreted it and said, Nebuchadnezzar, you're that head of gold. Babylon was the first world power. Assyria was a major power. Egypt was a major power. But Babylon was a true world power. They conquered basically all the known world. So Nebuchadnezzar decided to make an image and have everybody worship it. And being he was the head of gold of this image, basically he's telling everybody, okay, you're going to, I've made this large image. If I remember correctly, it was 66 cubits tall. And uh, I want you to worship it, which is basically saying they're worshiping him. And if you remember the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three he Hebrews, well, let's read the story. So Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear the music, they got to fall down and worship this image. Let's start in verse 10. So these people accused the Hebrews, and this is what they're saying. Daniel chapter 3, verse 10. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace, and who is that God? And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, 
and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Before, therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont, wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So it was so hot that the guys getting ready to throw the Hebrews into this furnace, they died from the heat. Huh. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. If you look at your modern Bible versions, it'll say he looks like uh, a son of the gods, plural. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whom, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their homes shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that, to, that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Guess what? Daniel chapter 4, guess who wrote that? Guess who wrote chapter 4 of the book of Daniel? Nebuchadnezzar did. Huh, didn't know that, did you? Not many people do. You can read it if you want. I'm not going to. Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire huh So, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay, back to 
Isaiah 43, verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Now remember in the book of Exodus, what God did to Egypt, all the plagues that mimicked the plagues of revelation that he sends upon the earth. But he also mentions Ethiopia. What does the Bible say about Ethiopia? Well, in 2 Chronicles 14.12, So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. So the Lord smote them. How about Zephaniah 2.12? Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Ezekiel 30, verse 5. Ethiopia and Libya and L Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people and Chub and the men of the land that is in the league shall fall with them by the sword. Doesn't sound like the Lord likes Ethiopia, does it? Isaiah 43, verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Now are they speaking about people that are spiritually blind and deaf? Is there a parallel verse to this in the book of John in the New Testament? Well, let's take a look. John chapter 9, verse 39. Now Jesus had just given sight to a blind man. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into the, this world, that they which see might not see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. Isaiah 43, verse 9. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them de can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, It is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you, Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. There is none that can deliver out of mine hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake 
I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Didn't Jesus say that he was a Savior? Didn't he say he was a Lord? Lord of Lord, King of Kings? There are just some people in this world that just don't get it. Verse 16. Isaiah 43, 16. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness, and rivers in the deserts, to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with, their, with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father hath sinned. Who is the first father that sinned? Adam. And thy, tr and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. All right, that's the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and the only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him and him alone. Amen.